Okay. I'm here. You're here. Are we here? All right. Guys, I don't for know if we're there though. <laughs> right. For those of you who might have been trying to watch us, we've been having new technical difficulties, not the same ones we sometimes have. Uh, it's something new every time. And uh, we seem to have gotten kicked off and then we're not able to get back on. So I'm wondering, um, are we here now? I, yeah. I, I, we did the same thing where it said that we'd been recording for like 11 seconds. Like we were, oh, I see a viewer. We have a oh, viewer. Have a viewer. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I feel good about this. Yay. We're here. Let's start again. Let's pretend like we didn't record six minutes of a broadcast that nobody saw. Right. Let's pretend this is all fresh. <laughs> good morning, Liz. Hey, thanks for being here. Hi, Liz. <laughs> Sorry, we need to run around. Facebook gave us a message, or the software we're using gave us a message that said that Facebook ended our video and then gave me a link to their terms of service, which made me feel like we'd done something wrong, like we were being ejected from Facebook. But I don't think we were. I think it was just a glitch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Melanie says it's working now. Like, how do good. Good. Like, good. 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 like, would an author complain that we're talking about their book? Like, no, I think it was really just a glitch. And that was like the link that comes along with it. <laughs> but yeah, it made me afraid for a moment. Well, good morning, everybody. I'll introduce myself. I'm Allison. I'm a technical services librarian at Fairfield County District Library. And I am currently reading, um, I'm currently listening to um, Lovecraft Country, which is the book that the TV series, which was recently popular, um, was based on. And the audiobook is very good so far. It's very well performed and I am enjoying it. I had to take a break in the middle. I started it and then had to take a break for book club book and now I'm back to it, so. <laughs> Um, the Aww. books we check out in Dirt and Read are revolting. We're bad librarians. That's why we're hashtag banned, Liz says. <laughs> yeah, well, I do have a bad habit. That's yeah. for sure. Um, I'm Leah. I'm the coordinator of adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. How could I forget my title? I don't know. I'm currently listening to um, The Witching Elm by... Yes, the witch elm. Witch elm, yeah. Witch yes. Why did you say witching? I don't know. The witch elm by Tana French, and I'm started the Liar's Dictionary by someone. I forget the author's name. It's right over there. I can see it. I just can't read it from across the room. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I read the prologue and had to look up like ten words in the dictionary. But in my defense, they were all like botanical terms or from. French well, and I, think that that was, I think that was the intention of that yeah. prologue was yeah. to like be that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was purposely, purposefully uh, uh, tricky. But I have to return it because there's a waiting list and that's really annoying. So I also had that book checked out, which is why I know what the prologue was like. I also read the prologue and then about two pages of the first chapter and had to return it because because there were holds. So um, which is great. I'm always happy. They're, you know, I'm glad that the book is going out to people, but I can't keep it anymore. So um, I'm not sure if I will check it back out again because it really, it really seemed for like word nerds in the very best way. That is not a derogatory term, but I don't really consider myself. But do you know who is? Is you because there's a big part about reading the dictionary. That whole prologue is referencing like reading the dictionary from cover to cover, which you have told us on here before that you have done or not attempted to cover. I only made it to the ends. You've attempted to do. And so that when I was reading that prologue, I was thinking right of you. And I was like, Leah might like this book more than I do. <laughs> um, um, and Liz says she loves ebooks for the easy looking up of words. Yes. You know what? Maybe I will try an ebook format because I'm there mm -hmm. with a book and my phone. Look <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is a really good point. I have a friend who also will sometimes intentionally read a certain book on her e-reader so that she can easily look up the words, especially if it's like an old book, like a classic that's going to have like outdated terms that, you know, that right. she's not going to know. Um, so yeah, that's I'm a really good point, Liz. Purposely not listening to this book, which if you know me, I almost exclusively listen to books these days. I, um, but you, you, you can't like stop and look up a word in the middle of a, a, an audio book the same way. No, so it's no. But yeah. And honestly, that's one of the things about audiobooks that, like, I do have to be careful with, like, no matter what I listen to, if it's, like, you can't flip back a few pages and be like, oh, is that the same guy who, you mm -hmm. know, like, you can in a book, like, yeah. and I, 
so I have, when I listen to audio, I have to be selective about, is it going to be relatively straightforward so that I don't, because it's also audio, I'm usually doing something else. So I have to, I don't know, like my brain has to be listening well enough and it has to be like straightforward enough. Or it has to be a light read. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Speaking of light reads, I did, I have a couple of things to tell you and to share with you. Um, I did this on our fake broadcast, so sorry, but I did just want to show that we have Dressed in the Age of Jane Austen. If you are into Bridgerton, it's the same time period as far as like the clothing and it is this glossy, glossy book with lots of pictures and illustrations of uh, what people would be wearing in the Regency era. And as I said, uh, I do not like Regency era fashion. It all looks like one Everyone's wearing the same ugly nightgown, but I know that plenty, of people, plenty of people really do like this. So we do have this book called Dress in the Age of Jane Austen, and um, I will be returning it. I checked it out for, for the show. So that's why I wanted to make sure I mentioned it. But um, have you watched Bridgerton yet, Leah? I have not, I, it, which is crazy because I'm so excited to watch it, but I haven't. I haven't watched it yeah. yet. I just and uh, the books, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure everybody knows at this point it's based on a book series, but the first book is called The Duke and I. It's, you know, not going to be just called Bridgerton. <laughs> Not Bridgerton style illustrations, Liz. You're right. That would be not safe for work, but yeah, not appropriate. These are illustrations of clothing in Ugly the region style, uh, according to Allison. Ugly <laughs> only, only clothed people in this in these illustrations. Um, but but yeah. So the Duke and I is the name of the first book in that series. It does have quite a long hold list um, because. But I just. I just well, right, right. Everyone's ordering more copies, but it's not before the series. It is not a book that was currently in print, really. It was just a fat mass market romance novel. So it, we didn't, you know, we have just a few copies in our consortium. And so everyone had to order the new version that's like, you know, now a Netflix series. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I do. I know I'm talking a bunch, but I had one other thing. <laughs> okay. Um, in our last show, um, I think it was our last show, we were discussing some astrology stuff. Mm -hmm. And so over the weekend, I was upstairs in my house, which is where my personal library is. And I was doing something. So I, was, I would, it doesn't matter. Um, I was looking at a shelf that I don't normally look at because it's near the bottom because it's all of these like coffee table sized books. Mm -hmm. And, um, which I used to buy like obsessively as a kid because they had all these pictures in them and stuff, but I don't have Beautiful. Um, so I still have a lot of them. But anyway, I'm like scanning through that, looking at those for the first time in a long time. Then look what I own. The only astrology book you'll ever need. Yes. The very book that you told me about in our show. I've owned this. I, per I remember this. I purchased this in junior high from the bargain table of Walton Books. And I've had it ever since. I have that same one. Like so I I'll the, new copy. the new copy is shorter and it's this pretty shade of blue, a little bit paler than my wall. It's like, it's really pretty. And um, yeah, nice. I've got a great big ugly one too. <laughs> well, yeah, it is very large. And I do remember, I mean, it's no wonder I was not going to mess with it at that point in time. That is very intimidating. Yeah, that, you use those tables to build your birth chart your natal chart and um, to see where all your planets were at the time of your birth. But um, yeah. yeah, I can't believe you got the book that I was talking about. I know, about. I own it. And that, my friends, is how you know, you probably have too many books that you haven't read if you can have a full conversation in a public forum about a book and not even know that you own it, so. <laughs> uh, Liz any have. Yeah, I know, right? Liz, Liz says I need to let you speak now. You say when I have a mouthful of coffee. Um, I'm, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I don't actually have all that much to talk about this morning. I didn't I didn't bring like, oh, conversation. No. Um, well, I only brought that Jane Austen book because I meant to last week and I forgot it at work. And then I couldn't help the astrology thing. Yes. Well, you had to bring that one up. I think that's so <laughs> funny that we... We both have that book, and you didn't know that you had that book. Nope. So now I'll be doing my natal chart. I'll try to, if I have time, I'll try to report back to you guys, everybody, if I do it, how that goes. Um, <laughs> or you could check out the, the new edition of the book and just let, let. Where they do it for me. Yeah. yeah. So. That sounds better. 
<laughs> or or you could just Google natal chart and there are like a million websites that will do it for you. I would probably even pay like five dollars or something for an app to do it for free. Okay. If it'll be done for free. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they'll they'll tell you what each, what everything means. All right. Well, I'll get back to everybody about that. I know you're all on the edge of your you, the edge of your seats wondering what my natal chart says about me. Since you're on the cusp. Right, I know. <laughs> I don't even remember the cusp of what, but I remember your It's fine. I'll I'll give you I'll give you all a full report in the coming weeks. Okay. We can't wait to hear Alice. Sure. <laughs> so we um Audrey says it's a small universe, apparently. Ha 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 ha. I like that joke there. Um, <laughs> so we were trying to come up with ideas for our show today. And we were just like, we're, we're book nerds. We will uh, not quiz each other because quizzing is, that's this is just friendly exchanges of tidbits of information to see if the other knows. How's that? We have to really be careful with our language here because if we call it trivia, my blood pressure will skyrocket. It'll become <laughs> a whole thing. So it can't be trivia. It just, we were just going to talk about like fun book facts, but of course, using them in a quiz type form is probably the most entertaining version. And then can also, you know, we can ask you guys too. You guys can like jump in in the comments, but we cannot be more clear that this is not a serious trivia situation. Not at all, because um, I didn't study. So, no. <laughs> and and not you know, trivia with Allison, she's like hardcore when she comes up with trivia questions. I'm like, no, this isn't going to be. It's too, and because of that, it's too much work. Like I couldn't put, I couldn't do that this week. Um, and also, like neither of us, I think, wants to look dumb on here on our own trivia show. So we can't do that either. We can't come up with questions that are too hard for the other person because then we'll feel stupid. <laughs> Audrey wants us to go, go, go. But I think, right. are, are you nervous? Like I'm nervous. <laughs> I oh Mary says that our friendly scheduler may have oversold this show and but in, in your defense we had more energy when we were talking about it the other day we, we did we we were like this is gonna be fun and then we're like are we, are we really doing this well okay here's here's part of it the world the universe of literary trivia is very broad and we don't really need need like we kind of wanted to be more specific to maybe stuff that might be fun to talk about on here also. Mm -hmm. And when I do the trivia they're referencing that I've done is Harry Potter trivia. That's a very, that's a contained universe. And I can always look up the answers just like to fact check this. It's just the whole, the whole world of, of books. It's just, it's a lot. Yes. It, I mean, like it's all over the place. Like the questions that I was finding when I was looking up trivia. Um, this <gasps> Marilyn, Marilyn, we we, just, we we recognize this anniversary every year. It's our three year anniversary of coming in first at Brew Dog Trivia. Um, Geeks who drink trivia, they do trivia at different bars and pubs and restaurants throughout the country. And there's one at Brew Dog and Canal. And we all, Leah too, we used to go very regularly on Monday nights to these trivia nights before the pandemic. I work for her. It's too <laughs> high. Um, but we came in first. We came in first, and we we won a prize, and we won so much like I don't know honor. I, I, I wasn't there that night, so it was. But yes, because there is a group there that they win every single week. Like they come in first every single week. Like something yeah, like that's just what they do in a row or something. Mm -hmm. But and you, we guys, them. you uh, beat them. And we beat them. Yeah, it wasn't just because they weren't there because that also, you know, um, but no, we beat them that week and they congratulated us. It was a really wonderful memory. And we've talked about trivia night since then, since the pandemic. I mean, I mean, it's been this is the longest we've ever gotten out going. And yeah, it's been sad. I miss it. I miss my friends. I miss the cauliflower wings. That oh, Brewdog the had. wings. They were so good. So good. And I miss the team. I even miss the team that used to beat us. Like I miss having a like a foe. I don't really have any foes anymore except the virus. <laughs> Do you want me to become your arch nemesis? Yes, like, let's let's become let's become frenemies. Frenemies, yeah. There we go. 
Oh, thanks, Marilyn. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Uh, it is relevant to our trivia situation, and uh, <laughs> it was a very high point in my life. <laughs> I, I I always enjoy trivia, although I'm like, I always feel like the weak link on the team. Like, I, I don't know that much, so. No, you know plenty, and you also usually know the weird stuff, like the, like the miscellaneous stuff, like that, <laughs> I don't know, you're great. Um, uh, Chris says that the Donato's cauliflower wings are horrible. Sorry. I saw them advertised and I was like, hmm, I wonder how good they be, so. I'm sorry Thanks, to hear Chris. that. In fairness, I feel like most cauliflower wings are probably bad because they're trying to be something they're not. And the thing right. about the ones at BrewDog, it's not like you're going to pretend like you think you're eating a real wing, but they're just, right. they're super crispy. So there's something else entirely, but they're very yeah. good. They're very good. Yeah. Yeah. And the flavor on them is just phenomenal. Yeah. Anyway, I suppose we've promoted BrewDog enough. <laughs> I'm <laughs> getting a cut of it. Um <laughs> Uh, anyway, so do you want to see what we came up with? We have not discussed these at all. So also there's a chance that we have the same questions or they're just so dramatically different. It's ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. You you can go first. Ask me okay. first. See what, well, see, how, see how you're doing it. What I decided to do actually was um, I have some things that are just kind of fun facts that it's not okay. like there's no... I wouldn't expect you to necessarily know the answer and the point is just to kind of reveal the fact. But then I also have some that are more questions and the ones that are questions I set the way I framed it was um, these are movies or TV shows that are based on a book. What book are they based on? Okay. So um, I can, I can start there and okay. I have, um, I have multiple choice answers if you need them or if you know right away. Okay. Um, so for example, the movie 10 Things I Hate About You. Is it based on Pygmalion, Wuthering Heights, Twelfth Night, or The Taming of the Shrew? The Taming of the Shrew. Yes. Good job. See, this isn't so bad. <laughs> um, do you want to go next? you want to go back and forth? Uh, sure. I don't care. Um, this is a shaky concept to begin with. <laughs> Let's see. Name that poet. Who wrote the classic, the beat classic, How? Would that be Alan Jack Ginsburg? Kerouac, oh. Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Alan Ginsburg, or William Carlos Williams? My guess was Ginsburg. Ginsburg, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so just as elevated as what you're describing, The Nutty Professor is based on which work? Much Ado About Nothing, The Crucible, The Invisible Man, or The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Nutty Professor. Jekyll and Hyde? Good okay. job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, I'm gonna ask you this, but I don't know if you read this series. I know we talked about it, but I can't remember if you told me you read it. I can it. also ask, I can phone a friend, i.e. the audience. Okay. What is the name of the College of Magic that Quentin Coldwater attends in Lev Grossman's Magicians trilogy? I did. I read the first book of that and I loved it, but I do not remember. I have no idea. I'm going to give you options. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Ossethorn, Brass and Nose, Pembroke, Break Bills. I don't know. Break bills. Okay. okay. That sounded most familiar, but I couldn't, I couldn't pin it down. No, that's total. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, all right. So what about, um, yeah, we'll go Clueless. It was the movie Clueless based on Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Wuthering Heights, or Pride and Prejudice? Emma. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I love, uh, Jane Austen and all her mm -hmm. <laughs> various iterations yeah. and copies. Yeah. Yes. Um, name that author. Who wrote okay. The Girl on the Train? Read options. Paula Hawkins. Paula Hawkins, you got it. 
Yeah. I got a picture of the cover in my head. If only yeah. I had a photographic memory, but that is sometimes how it works. You like picture. Yes. I do the same thing and I will try sometimes to describe the cover to people. I'm like, it's that one. I'm like, the boy's got the eye. <laughs> Right. Yes. So I probably sometimes it probably works perfectly when you do that. Yes. Not <laughs> always. <laughs> All right. My next question: Which uh, book was this based on? I'm sorry. Which book was The Lion King based on? Tale of Two Cities, Hamlet, The Count of Monte Cristo, or King Lear? Hamlet. Yep. <laughs> um. How about this one? William Faulkner's The Sound and the Fury takes its title from which Shakespeare play? Hamlet, King Lear, Romeo and Juliet, or Much Ado About Nothing? I have no idea. Hamlet. I thought we were on a Hamlet role. No, I thought we were on a Shakespeare role. And so maybe the trick was that it wasn't Hamlet. Um, but no, I did not know that. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't think, I didn't write down the answer to this one. I think I know it. Uh, we'll skip that one. Um, <laughs> this one, this one is a little bit of a trick because it's based on a book that's based on a book. Bridget Jones's Diary, is it based on a book that's based on Jane Eyre, Little Women, Wuthering Heights, or Pride and Prejudice? Pride and Prejudice. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> my, personally, my favorite Pride and Prejudice interpretation. I'm not, I'm just, not into the period stuff really, even though like I like the book, the book is my favorite Pride and Prejudice and I like that in the book context, but for some reason I just can't get into it. I know, I know, I know, but Bridget Jones's Diary, I can't get into it. Um, Audrey says, the, oh, that the quote is, it is all but sound and fury signifying nothing or something like that. And Mary says that Faulkner is a good one. Mary is a fan of Faulkner. So. Oh, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Learning things every day. <laughs> That's good um, to know. I'm trying to to see. Just it's okay. I don't know the answers. I I don't. I mean, okay. I don't feel any sense of like I'm not doing a good job. Like it's just there's so many books in the world. I don't. Yeah, I can't probably know. Um, oh. And Audrey says she loves the Lizzie Bennett diaries. I have not read those. Me neither. Um, do, 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 uh, do you remember um, in The Great Gatsby, which Long Island village does Gay, Jay Gatsby live in? Well, it's either East Egg or West Egg, but I can't remember which one. I'm guessing West Egg. West Egg. Yeah, I, you. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought it was a three. <laughs> um, like, like you were telling me, it's going to be the third answer I say. And I was going to say, it's not very subtle. Everyone's going to know you gave me the answer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to help. I'm like, it's a W. Yes. Um, I will go off of the movie thing real quick and okay. say, um, which you might have run across, across this when you were doing different, when you were looking stuff up. But um which work of literature, I don't know, I didn't write this down in question form, so I got to piece it together. Um, so there's a work of literature, and that's going to be what your answer is. The author donated the copyright to a children's hospital, and so the, over time, the children's hospital gets all the, um, you know, profits from that work, and they recently, or at some point, renewed it, like, in perpetuity, so it's probably always going to be able to belong to this children's hospital for as long as it's in existence. Do you know what work it is? I do not. Peter Pan. Oh, but that's awesome. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't that a nice story? <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, this one is totally, you're probably not going to, I'm going to ask it in question form, but um, it, it's just a silly one. And which book significantly sold its, its three millionth, 141,592nd copy on February 2013. It is something about pie, but I don't know what. What's oh, what? what? Pie? Yes, Life of Pie. Nice. <laughs> Three, one, and five. Nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Who keeps track of these things? Because I did run across some like 
facts or whatever, when I was looking these up, I was like, who even, who even knows these things? Um, Audrey says that Lizzie Bennett Diaries, it was a video blog version that that was really good. And if you feel like binge watching something, Google Lizzie Bennett. Um, okay. And okay. Audrey says, Mary asked if it was on YouTube. And she said, yes, she watched it there twice, so. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for all the information. Um, I did, let's see, okay. Two, all right, I don't know which one to do next. I'll do this one, um, which is, this is from a book of trivia questions because naturally that is something that I own. So I don't have a necessarily fact check like thing for this, but it says out of these four, which is the volume most commonly stolen from libraries around the world? Okay. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, The Joy of Cooking, Guinness Book of World Records, or a thesaurus? I'm going to say Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I, I mean, as, as librarians and even just book readers, of course, like it's got all the pictures of crazy stuff in it. You know, of course, that's going to be the one that would be most stolen out of those. <laughs> a dictionary. Chris, I have a question for us. Uh, what was the first book to movie adaptation? I have no idea. So Chris, you're going to have to come back and give us an answer. You will have to give us the answer to that because I do not know that either. Mm -mm. I should have looked that up with the other questions that I was doing, but. Yeah. Mm. While we're waiting for his answer, I'll go ahead and ask you a question. Yeah. Um, what is the novel Frankenstein's alternative name? Frankenstein or. Yeah, it's something about, is it something about like man? Modern. Yeah. Oh, modern Prometheus. There you go. Yes, yes. You probably catalog. How many copies of that book? You'll know it. <laughs> right, right, right. This is true. Birth of a Nation. That was actually my guess. Andrea was going to be Birth of a Nation, but I didn't know. Um, I didn't know either. That was that was. I couldn't think of anything prior to Birth of a Nation. We'll say it that way. But I wasn't sure if maybe there was. Um, I have no idea. So. Uh. When looking up these questions, I did not also expect to diagnose myself, but Leah, you are familiar with Japanese. Did you know there's a word for acquiring, acquiring reading materials, but letting them pile up in one's home without reading them? Sundo, sun, sundoku? No. Yes, Sund yes, no. yes. Yes, that is it. And so apparently I have that. I know it's not a, it's not actually a medical condition. It's just <laughs> word, but that is what that is what I suffer from. Yes. Clearly. It's one of those things. Like, I, I, I think a lot of us suffer from that. Yes. Um, and Alice in Wonderland. Oh, cool. Interesting. Nice. Thank you, Chris. That was a good one. Like I said, probably one I should have had based on the things that I was pulling questions about. Um, let me see. Where is, I've got, I've got one for you. Yeah. Where is it? I don't know. Man. I know. I've got too many notes here. I've got like 32 pages of, <laughs> I, I was just like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. And it's, it, it's a little overwhelming. So I need to stop. Um, well, apparently you just need to turn this into a real program because that's a lot more work than I put into this, I will say. Okay, Agatha Christie, that was not uh, a, a pen name, but she did write books under a pen name. Do you know what her, her pen name was? Mm -hmm. No, news to me. Mary Westmacott. She wrote um, romances under that name and kept Aww. it a secret for 20 years. <laughs> oh, good for her. I would love to read one of those. Right? Yeah. Like, yes. Um. I did come up with a list. These again are not, um, not it's not like a, a trivia question, but just I was looking at movies that were based on books and ones that I did not realize were based on books. And probably the top one for me was a book called Alias, Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, published in 1987. And apparently Mrs. Doubtfire, the movie is an extremely true um, remake of that, like very, very true to the original book. Um, I had no idea. I had no idea that was a book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Audrey says next staff development day, we can do book trivia. I don't want to be involved in putting it together. It's no. too much. It's too much. <laughs> Stephen um, King pen name is what Mary's asking if anybody uh, knows. Richard Bachman. 
Yes, I am familiar with that pen name. <laughs> um, and then also when, cause we've talked about this on the show before as well, um, that I didn't realize that Die Hard is also based on a book. Really? Um, yes, called Nothing Lasts Forever by R Roderick Thorpe. It was published in 1979. Um, it was actually a sequel to another book Roderick Thorpe wrote called The Detective, which was made into a movie starring Frank Sinatra. And so I guess before they were gonna make Die Hard, contractually they had to ask Frank Sinatra to be in Die Hard and he turned it down. Totally different movie that would have been. And then they changed, they had to change some of the Die Hard story, mm -hmm. or I suppose I should say some of the Nothing Lasts Forever story to remove references <laughs> to the story of the detective because they were clearly not the same person in the same story. I, I had heard that about them all having to offer the role to Frank Sinatra, I didn't realize why. And mm -hmm. I was, it was one of those, I didn't bother to read the, yeah. the what's under the facts. But yeah. okay. So those were the two, when I was looking at books, movies you didn't know were based on books, those were the two that really jumped out at me that I had not known were based on books. <laughs> um, we all know that Dr. Seuss is a pen name for Theodore Seuss Geisel. Um, do you know why he had to use why he started using that pen name? I do not. He was um, he he drew cartoons for the 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 magazine, the Dartmouth Jack and Lantern, the school magazine. He was a student okay. at Dartmouth, and he and his friends got caught drinking gin, which was not allowed because it was like prohibition times. Yeah. So he was no longer allowed to write for. Mm. The, so he started drawing cartoons. Um, okay. And, submitting them under other names and he used a couple different ones um but eventually Seuss is the one that that stuck and he started using it um but did you know we're all pronouncing his name wrong Seuss no yeah. I did not apparently it's supposed to be that changed good luck changing the world's mind about that right yeah um the guy who wrote his uh his buddy um, put together a little poem so that people would know how to say his name correctly. Yeah. Said, you're wrong as a deuce and you shouldn't rejoice. If you're calling him Seuss, he pronounces it Soyce. Well, no wonder we're not pronouncing it that way. Right? But yes, apparently it should, we're, should, we should be saying Dr. Soyce. But, but his, yes, that's what his buddy wrote. <laughs> Wow, that is that is quite that is interesting. I I I don't think that's going to catch on. It's not. He's Doctor Seuss for now and forever. Right, like Chrissy Teigen. That's not how you pronounce her name either. Right. But um, even she didn't know that was how you. <laughs> it's too late now, basically. Right. So that's just who she is, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. What else do I have? I will give you a question. Um, Andrea says, I won't, she will not be pronouncing his voice. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I don't know. Rebellion, Andrea says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is, that is what it is. I refuse. Um, okay. Well, we'll say which of these movies was based on a book by Michael Lewis. The Big Short, The Big Lebowski, The BFG, or Big Little Lies? The Big Lebowski? No, The Big Short. Okay. Michael Lewis is a, like a nonfiction writer and The Big Short, um, he wrote the book, The Big Short, and then they made that into that movie, which was really good. He also wrote Moneyball, which was okay. He wrote a lot of things, but it was new. But I can't place it, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, he wrote Moneyball as well, so which was about like, the use of statistics in baseball. Um, two things that one would think you couldn't make interesting for me. And right. yet, <laughs> yeah, that is his gift. Uh, somehow I was into it. Um, <laughs> see. Um, Ann Perry was not born mm -hmm. Ann Perry. Do you know okay. why she changed her name? No, I don't believe it or not. And Andrea says, "Oh my gosh, I just recently watched Moneyball and really enjoyed mm -hmm. it." So yeah, I love someone who can take something like that and make that that topic interesting. Right? Who can you can even make it into like a narrative, uh, an engaging narrative, and not just like 
Do you want to know some stuff about baseball? Do you want to know some stuff about the use of statistics? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was good. If you're not going to read the book, at least watch the movie. But in Perry, she changed her name um, because when she was 15 years old, she and her best friend murdered her best friend's mother. And um, <laughs> this doesn't sound true. It, it's absolutely true. Um, she was born Juliet Marion Holm, H-U-L-M-E. Um, they it was the the Parker Holm case. You can Google it. Um, they murdered her her friend's mother, and um, and she served five years for because she was underage and. Yes, they made a movie, Heavenly Creatures, although um, they say that Heavenly Creatures has like distorted like what their relationship was. They're, they say it was not, the relationship was not like that. But yes, they killed her friend's mom. And then after she was released from prison, she moved um, back to, uh, she moved to, I don't know, I think she moved to England and then to Scotland where her mother was and changed her name. And she took Perry was her uh, stepfather's last name. So that's where the Perry came from. And she, um, yeah, so she so named, changed her name. Did, I mean, were they convicted of this murder? Did yes. they go to jail? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's her five years and because she was like underage. It was only a five year sentence. And um, but yeah, she. Why did they kill the, why did they kill the friend's mother? Um, I think like, the the let me see. I mean, I'm invested in this now. Who who killed? They had them? like the 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 two girls had like this rich fantasy life, and the 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 friend her family was going to move to South Africa, and they didn't want to be separated, and so killing her mother would put a stop to that move. Like it was it was very um very twisted. But they they were just like so they had this weird like fantasy world that they lived in that was like um James Mason and Orson Welles were like were were in like their fantasy world like they thought that it was it was weird it was weird watch the movie um but yes wow i they, did not know they were be separated so they 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 killed the mother that's just a big jump, a big logical jump to to make, and a very unfortunate one. This is interesting. I will have to look this up later. And Melanie well, says that supposedly her friend convinced her to do it. So, well, I will have to look into that more. That is a lot of information, and just not something yeah. I expected at all. She she's a convicted murderess. Murderess. That is that is definitely the <laughs> the term we should use. Um, all right. So I know we're over time. Do we want? I have only a couple more questions. You have 32, 32 more pages of questions, um, but they're not very hard. Mine are obviously not very challenging or illuminating, but um, I'll just go ahead and finish because there's only a couple more. Um, the movie Easy A, was it based on Pride and Prejudice, The Scarlet Letter, Pygmalion, or Midsummer Night's Dream? Scarlet Letter. Yes. And She's the Man, Much Ado About Nothing, Romeo and Juliet, Othello, or Twelfth Night? Twelfth night. Yes, ma'am. Good job. Oh wait, I had one more, but it was a more Shakespearean plays. <laughs> right. Uh, this one's a slightly different format, but um, what movie was based on Oil by Upton, Sin Upton Sinclair? Is it No Country for Old Men? There Will Be Blood? Super Bad or Michael Clayton? Um, what was the first option? No Country for Old Men. What was the second option? There Will Be Blood. There Will Be Blood. Yes, ma'am. Good job. <laughs> and my, final, my final thing was just looking at a quick review of Netflix and some of the very top shows and movies they've okay. had in the past year have been based on books. All right. And so we'll just say Bridgerton, The Queen's Gambit was also a book. Mm -hmm. um, the series Lupin is based on a series of books. Um, that's another one that's been extremely popular in the last month or so. <clears throat> the show You is based on a book by Carolyn Kepnes. Mind Hunter is based on a book. Um, Virgin River is based on a series of books. So all of these are in very recent times. Of course, there's plenty of stuff on Netflix based on books, but these yeah. are some really highly watched shows right now mm -hmm. that were all based on books. Um, I want to know why Mary said, I drink your milkshake. Because that's from There Will Be Blood. It is the most iconic scene in There Will oh. Be Blood. I haven't seen it. 
clearly because that 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 would if you remembered anything from that movie it would be I drink your milkshake that is that is the only thing to be remembered from that movie if you're gonna um <laughs> like I was just guessing but okay yes 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 <laughs> we have a note from Carol the Expanse I'm guessing that is that also based on books then that is not something I'm familiar with yeah, but I, I think so yeah nice yeah there's, just, there's so many and so many like I said, that, you know, previously, like- I was uh, reading that series right now. Oh, nice. Okay, so then yes, it absolutely is based on books, confirmed. <laughs> um, so there's just, there's so much stuff. That was that was the route that I took with my trivia because there's just like- Yeah, just so there was just so much. I was just, like I said, 32 pages. I'm like, I don't even know where to start with this. It's so much. I know, right? <laughs> oh yeah, and Firefly, Firefly Lane. Lane. Yeah, yes, I, yes. I had that written down too. I didn't know if it was popular yet, but I saw that it was coming out. So also based on books. Is, that, is it a book series or just one book? I don't know, but it is very popular. I know it's Babysitter's Club. What'd you say? Oh, but Babysitter's Club, Audrey said. Oh. That also obviously based on books. Yeah. Oh, Mary wants to know. She says that I think she's talking about the expanse. Oh, okay. That it really measures up, I think. Good. I haven't I haven't watched it or read it. So there's just so much stuff out there I can't keep up. I know. I can't keep up. And there's so many shows that I want to see and want to have seen. But do you know what I'm watching? I'm just watching Gilmore Girls again. <laughs> because nothing I, wrong with that. You know, I, I think especially like right now where everything is like so up in the air and you don't know what's coming next, having that thing that you can turn to that you know you know what's gonna happen, you know the characters, you're familiar, you're comfortable with it. It's just, it's what we re need right now, so. Yeah, and like I think also that new stuff is kind of struggling because it's either totally removed from the reality that we live in or it's like too much a part of the reality that we live in and I, like finding that in between is a little bit difficult um, right now before, like maybe once things are made in the near future, it won't feel like there's such a disconnect, but it's, I don't it's, know. It's, it's interesting watching shows that are like trying to incorporate it and how they're struggling mm -hmm. with it. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, because they'll constantly taking their masks off to talk to people because it's really hard to talk with your mask on mm -hmm. and deliver dialogue correctly. So it's, it, it's yeah. interesting watching how they're trying to get around that. Like, mm -hmm. okay, we're in this room and we've got the plexiglass partitions. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, so it's, it's, yes, I've seen, yeah. It's interesting. I've seen some of that. And I know that, like, if you're filming together extensively, you can just, you know, quarantine together and take, you know, those precautions. So, for example, and for like The Bachelor, um, they've all quarantined. There's no mask. There's nothing about that because they all live there and yeah. they, you know, they've been tested and that's that. Um, but in the beginning, I know we talked about this in the beginning, but like the first shows to come back on the air, the soap operas, just like doing everything they could, including using dummies and or uh, like the spouse, the person's real life spouse and the love scenes and everything, just trying the best they could to get production going again. Yeah. And I'm confident it had to do with the pandemic. There was a storyline on one not that long ago where a man believed that a mannequin was a real person and was like talking to her and stuff. And then she would like talk back, but I am confident it had to do with not having two people in the same room because why? I mean, yes, it's a soap opera, but that's really, really dumb. So I'm assuming it was, it had something to do with that. Or like people would always be shot from far away. Like you would see this person's face and then you would see this person's face, but you would never see them like together. <laughs> and um, I, one of the shows that I watched, they did, it was like, in March or April, like mm -hmm. right when like everything was happening, like their final episode for the the season, which I had not they had not planned for that to be their final episode for the season. Mm -hmm. They actually did it like Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. It was like, um, yeah, so, and like they were struggling with this new technology because it's like a courtroom. They're trying to figure out how they're going to do their cases via Zoom, which I'm sure yeah. the real court would be struggling with that. So it was right. an interesting the way right. they incorporated it into the storyline. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 Well, anyway, thanks for chatting about TV and movies for a second, but- um, <laughs> And books. <laughs> yeah. Um, whatever. Right, just jumped off from that. But anyway, it was good to see you guys again this week and we will be back again next week. 
Hopefully um, at 10.30, not whenever we show up today. Not later. Hopefully we don't get kicked off Facebook. Hopefully Leah doesn't have 32 more pages of trivia questions. I don't, I don't, I don't, I promise. <laughs> it was an impressive showing. I will see you, Leah, later, and I'll see everybody else next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>